Now, if the World Bank's income poverty threshold of $3.20 per day is used, Nigeria's poverty rate is 71%, compared to lower rates for some oil-producing developing countries like Brazil, which is 9.1%, Mexico, which is 6.5%, Ecuador, which is 9.7%, and Iran, 3.1%. This is actually very grim. Now, the big question is, with the large amount of human and natural resources, why is Nigeria's poverty profile leaving much to be desired? We would be exploring this further, and joining me in the discuss is Gamaliel Tanimomo. He is proficient in strategy design, leadership operations, people management, and data analytics. He joins us via Zoom this morning. Thank you so much, Gamaliel, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you. Now, despite the prevailing downturn, Nigeria is still seen as Africa's largest economy and one of the fastest growing in the world. Yet more than half of the Nigerian population still grapple with extreme poverty, while a small group of elites enjoy ever-growing wealth. What do you make of this situation? Okay, good morning to our listeners, um, irrespective of where you're listening from. So, I think that Nigeria is a case of many paradoxes. Um, and of course, quoting the AFD president, AFDB president, uh, we must explain what poverty or what GDP means to the average person. So, you have rightly mentioned that we are the largest GDP translates to improving on the life of a quality of life of an average Nigerian on the streets of Lagos. So what, what does GDP even mean? GDP is a sum of economic activities in a country. Mm. Gamaliel. Hello, Gamaliel. Okay, looks like uh, we've lost audio connection with Gamaliel there. We'll try to reconnect, but I was still looking at the issue of the poverty profile of Nigerians, especially as uh, the inflation rate over the past seven months has been dropping. Uh, it, it looks like it's really not uh, reconciling well or sitting well with the uh, current situation of the economy. We'll come back to uh, continue the conversation. Okay, I hear uh, Gamaliel is back with us. Gamaliel, thank you for joining us again. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please go ahead. So I was trying to dimension the conversation to say that Nigeria is a bit of paradox. We have arguably the biggest market in Africa, yet over 100 million Nigerians are experiencing multi-dimensional poverty. And the concept of multi-dimensional poverty is one that has just recently been coined by the World Bank to explain the gravity of the poverty that Nigeria is facing. Um, so, I mean, without being sarcastic, there's something we say things get level. So our own poverty is at the extreme. And it is worrisome because why do we have this poverty? So according to Statista, um, a global um, rating agency, the states in the northern part of the country have the highest poverty account as of 2019. Um, Shokuto has 87.73%, Taraba, Jigawa, and up down onto Lagos State that has a 4.3 poverty rate. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. So there's a direct correlation between insecurity and poverty mm. because the government cannot employ everyone. So I was listening to the news yesterday and the ICPC um, chairman is saying, was saying that they uncovered corruption and budget padding and there are several ghost workers and all of that. Lagos State has about 145,000 workers on its payroll. Mm. That's little that they can do. If, if you have 100 million Nigerians experiencing multidimensional poverty, that is an issue. So we need to look at the issue of poverty because it has, it has multiplier effects. And you'd also recall that in 2018, Nigeria took over from India as the world poverty capital. 
it looks like nothing has changed ever since. It looks like there's even a decline. Yes, by, by, by all metrics, because data, data don't lie. Um, so the president mentioned I was going to lift 100 million out of 100 million Nigerians, Nigerians out, out of, of poverty. poverty. Um, but I think that is just semantics. That is just news for the headlines. I mean, there is no strategy. Yes, the government is doing something around empower, soft loans, but it's the bottom line. So for me, it's, it's worrisome because poverty is, is not a zero-sum game. There, there are far-reaching implications of poverty. You have insecurity, you have global reputation, there's a decline in investor confidence, and all of that. So if we do not address the issue of poverty now, we're going to have more monumental results or consequences on our hands. And it comes down to lack of systems thinking. Mm -hmm. Systems thinking is the ability to think about a decision because it will have multiplier effect. So take, for example, look at the, look at the recently released white paper on the NSAS report in Lagos State. One decision has snowballed into several other consequences. If the army did not open fire on, 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 on NSAS protesters, we won't be here. Mm, so if the government... Yeah, I'm sorry, I was that's, going just, to, that's, I was, just, that's just digression. Yes. <laughs> so I was going to bring you back to this issue of the, you know, you talked about the uh, statistics that the President Mohammed Buhari's administration talked about taking 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. But there seems to be a conflict regarding the poverty data that's pre uh, presented by President Buhari's administration and the World Bank. And according to Buhari, we already talked about the fact that he mentioned that he was going to, in fact, there are also talks about the fact that he has taken 10 million Nigerians already out of poverty within the past two years. But no sooner had he made the statement, we saw the World Bank asserting that inflation has plunged 7 million Nigerians into poverty. How do we reconcile these statements? Okay, so let me help you a little bit. Part of the things I do is I write business plans and I conduct visibility studies. If you are projecting a price increase on your financial assumptions of 2%, and the inflation rate in your country is 21, 23%, you're already in poverty. That is the bottom line. So if the government is saying it has lifted 10 million Nigerians out of poverty, yeah, we can say it's true because I mean, government has given out empower this, empower that, uh, this and that. But look at the rising cost, rising cost of food items. Mm. I mean, I don't know how true it is that the bag of beans is 100,000. So some, some meals or some food, some food stuff where as the exclusive preserve of the poor. But they are now not the poor again. Beans used to be the last resort. Growing up as a child, I mean, we ate beans only when my parents didn't have money. Mm. But if you eat beans now, you are a rich man. Now, the World don't Bank has... Go, don't sorry even to go near Sandy, <laughs> don't, Okay, Gavalio, I'm sorry. Yes, trying to manage time here. The World Bank has discussed the next five-year uh, plan the country partnership framework that's the CPF for Nigeria with 1.5 billion dollars financing package to support a resilient post COVID 19 recovery and help the government achieve its goal of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by 2030 amid the challenges currently bedeviling the country. Do you see this plan becoming a reality? We know that the COVID-19 pandemic also affected the economy uh, to a large extent. But looking at this new plan, the federal government keeps churning out policies and plans saying that it will bring Nigerians out of poverty, will better the standard of living of Nigerians. But how do you see this playing out? Okay, so we, we, with every... With every business interest or strategy. Execution is always the problem. And we are very good with words, but we fail when it comes to implementation. Mm. So I want to see that plan being implemented. 
But of course, uh, well, are you hopeful? Are like you optimistic that. that it would be implemented, considering the past trends of the other policies and plans that have been churned out? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Okay, now one of the major drivers of poverty is corruption, and most especially in government establishments. However, notable efforts were made to increase accountability in the public sector, with 35 states publishing their annual budgets in 2020, and 15 states now operate a single treasury account. Now, going by this development, do you think it is enough to change the narrative, Gamaliel? Perhaps a little bit. But nothing has significantly changed. And we need to work on the law of averages in the country. Um, poverty is not a zero-sum game. You can't be doing one thing on one end and be doing one thing on the other end. There has to, there has to add up. Look at power generation, for example. We're still struggling with 4,000 megawatts. For a country of 100, 200 million. Look at, look at South Africa. South Africa generates twice or four times what we generate. And they are just little less, little above, above Lagos. So we need to fix some of these, some of these sectors. And then you can jumpstart, you can jumpstart um, the economy. So that would do little, but not much. Okay, in wrapping up, let's talk about a few uh, panacea to all of these issues. Okay. What are some of the solutions you would prefer to take Nigerians out of this huge poverty profile? Okay. So first is let's fix power. When you fix power, you are able to empower small businesses. Fix power, empower small businesses. Um, let's, let's get corruption out of the way. Let's let's fix the road. Let's fix infrastructure. Let's 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 make the environment friendly. Let 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 banks give loans. It is easier to for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for you to get a loan in one of the Nigerian banks. Mm -hmm. I mean, a hundred thousand loan. They start asking for your name, for your BVN, for your birth certificate, your mother's birth certificate, your father's. You know, All right, it's Gabriel. complex. Uh, thank, thank you so much. I know there's still so much to talk about, but we'll just peg it there for today. A very big thank you to you, Gamaliel Tanimomo, for being a part of Business Breakfast this morning. Thank you. All right. Have a great day.